Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Turner Podcasting System right here on IndieQuebec.com. It's the Prez once again with my co-host, none other than the WCW expert himself, the Stinger. Stinger, how you doing, man? I'm very good, wrestling fans. How are you? Uh, weather's starting to get better. Yeah, finally. Weather's starting to get better, finally. Uh, AW looked good this week, barely. Definitely good matches. Uh, fell asleep. Smackdown. <laughs> <laughs> good match, though. Ricochet versus uh, uh, Mahal. So, Jinder Mahal. Yeah. There you He's go, bro. Pitching for a title shot. For sure. He's in a show right now. I saw some of it. Uh, I forgot the name, but he's uh, it's about um, the drug trade there in, in India. It's like the drug cartel. Jinder Mahal, solid really? Show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Zero, he's good. He's a good actor, 100%. And. Um, that big guy uh, debuted on AEW. Yeah, he's like a new giant. The new giant, bro. He's Tony... with Jay Lethal and Sanjay e- Dutt. Yeah, exactly. I can't his name, exactly. But... He looks yeah, promising. So... Looks promising. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, stuff are going pretty good in uh, modern wrestling after Current the day wrestling. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. WrestleMania weekend and everything. So yeah, so this week we're going to review Uncensored 98. Uh, yeah, so we decided to, um, randomly kind of like go backwards. Yeah. Yeah. And pick a random event kind of. And yeah, this one was a really good event from March 98. It takes place from Alabama. You got the classic, uh, commentary team of Bobby Heenan, Tony Schiavone, Mike Tanay. Tanay. Yeah. So that was one thing, um, with the two thousands that when we were, uh, reviewing them, uh, Bobby Heenan, you know, he wasn't there anymore. He had been like relegated to like Saturday night, I think, only at that point. Yeah, he was doing Saturday night. Uh, I have the same cup, by the way. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so the, definitely, uh, it was different 2000 without him, but this was the classic commentary lineup. Yeah. Like you couldn't get any class, and uh, you know, unless uh, Dusty would join as well. Dusty would join all the time. So this was a solid uh, commentator. Yeah. I actually like the crowd too. They were pretty. Uh, they were yeah. pretty wild. Hot like crowd they were from Alabama. Absolutely, Southern. good old Alabama. They really sure. like. They would cheer the good guys, boo the bad guys. You yeah. know, classic. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Yeah, they had a pretty good, uh, pretty good turnout. It looked almost sold out, if not sold out. Yeah, it was pretty good, and uh, they kept it dark. I don't know if you realized, but uh, it was yeah, a bit more dim. The light. Crowd lighting like, was, was dark. It was super dark. It was, uh, I don't know if it was the NWO thing, but uh, I liked it. It was uh, different for sure. It was way different than what we see, uh, what we saw in 2000. Like 1998 had an s- amazing roster. And this pay per view is a great example of like just a little fraction of, of, of roster they used to make a super show. Uh, honestly, yeah. I was surprised. Very surprised. Not really surprised. It's 98, but the pay per view itself, the quality, amazing. Yeah, that's one thing, like we were saying uh, before we were recording, like, there are some guys who were on the roster at the time who weren't on this pay-per-view who were super good, but, like, you can't put everyone on the pay-per-view. And also, um, uh, they just had such a big roster, you know? It was not like WWE. Like, at the time, they probably had, like, twice the size the roster WWE had. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely WWE had a good roster, but not comparable to, uh, like, even close to WCW. Uh, yeah. yeah, like, like Goldberg's not even on this show, and Goldberg yeah. had already debuted by this time, for sure. That's true, that's true, and it was, like I, I said before, the show is kind of, it was good he wasn't on, like, I love Bill, guys, He's I'm a huge fan of Goldberg, but it was just maybe better that, you know, they, they didn't put him on, because uh, just the Raw, like... Goldberg would have changed it. It would have not been tainted, let's say, but it would have definitely changed. This was the core, and a lot of these guys were WCW based, you know, like uh, oh, yeah. Booker T, and uh, I know Eddie wrestled no, everywhere. No, for sure. Japan, like that being like, said, like it has such a solid um, card. Oh man, one hundred percent. It's not a perfect pay per view, but like it's really awesome. Pretty damn close, yeah. Like yeah, yeah but, but, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. Just the so, opening match. Yeah, that's it. So we might as well just get right into the opening match. Delving it. It's two Hall of Famers going at it for the TV title. Eddie Guerrero against Booker T. Eddie Guerrero accompanied by Chavo, 
who's yeah. like his bitch at the he's start. He's first. He's forced because I think previous the previous Thunder uh, Guerrero defeated him and he had to accompany him. Like uh, Chavo lost, so he had to accompany his uncle uh, to, to matches. Like a uh, yeah. yeah, like his and, bitch. Like, Eddie <laughs> would try to convince him to cheat. Yeah, he wouldn't want to. Chavo straight edge. She's like, no, no. Yeah. Throughout the whole uh, the whole show, we have Raven's flock sitting in front row, which yeah. is cool. Awesome. That was like Such a grungy. cool era. Just them being there, it made me like just reminds me of like what a cool era that was. But it was, man. That was the MTV, uh, like uh, you know, it was uh, some MTV era in there as well, right? So uh, definitely, man. They, At this you know, time, WCW... WCW was still winning the wa- the ratings war, but it was like about to change. This was the same month as WrestleMania 14 in 1998, where uh, HBK takes on Stone Cold in the main event with Mike Mike Tyson, Tyson, which very shortly after that, WWE took back the ratings. Oh, yeah, they reign supreme. They they took back the control of wrestling. But yeah, at this time, WCW was still reigning supreme. But if you compare this, like just for wrestling fans, before we get into the first match, think about this awesome pay-per-view that we're about to review and WrestleMania 14, which to me is one of my all-time favorite pay-per-views. What a crazy month for wrestling fans. What a crazy era it was to be a wrestling fan back then. Yeah, I mean, both events were amazing. I mean, like, especially WrestleMania, you know, like WrestleMania's classic there. Well, come on, Pete Rose. And, no, but and, this and... was like, all, like I put this up there almost with like... How good Absolutely. Oh, yeah, of course, man. Because you had the the star... You, you had a lot of good stars on this. Like, this, like we're, as we'll be unraveling through the, the, the event, yes, absolutely. Uh, both comparable and just the plethora of you know star power you had yeah. both uh events is man unmatched like that was the prime uh i think from 98 to 299 even it was prime for wrestling 99 more in, in wwe but 98 both companies bro were booming like yeah he, you'd yeah, watch yeah, both sure. shows if you missed one okay you just watch it later and then like you You'd still cover both. It was that era where you'd want to watch. You'd Wrestling want to was watch. So hype. Yeah, yeah. You didn't you want to pick to have cable. Everyone you wanted cable. You had to have cable to watch both, man. And you wanted to watch both. Yeah. And the pay-per-views. They were I mean, sick. Yeah. Man, look, we're here, here. Let's just start. So yeah, yeah, it starts out with Eddie and Booker T. And this is not put in, guys. Uh remember, this is classic Booker T. Like he was yeah. younger, he was fresh, he was hungry, super athletic um classic attire as well uh, for sure and also the wcw title actually meant something uh, the tv at, title yeah the tv title bro at, at that time right yeah. so you had a lot of good guys holding it like uh, booker and uh, and steiner scott um jericho at some point benoit benoit no yeah at so, this point the the tv title was still uh, a respected title uh, definitely. I think Booker had just uh, started his real ascent as like a single. A single run. Yeah, yeah. He, he, you know, as we know him as Harlem Heat, he'll be one of the best tag teams. They're all, they'll always be one of the best, most classic tag teams of all time. But he was doing his mark as, as a singles wrestler. Um, Eddie was Eddie. Eddie was still known. He, he it's Eddie Guerrero, man. So the agility we Always saw. Always amazing his, as a heel. You know, amazing. He, he, his, uh, he was the best mode. as a heel, for sure. Like, we loved him as a face, and he was hilarious and just so cool and hip. Uh, but as a heel, he as a heel, was he just was so effective. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, awesome opener. Two awesome wrestlers that, at the time, probably deserved to be booked higher on the show. But, like, they just killed it in the first match. It, know, was, it was pretty hard to set the, the bar high, uh, you know, like they set the bar high. But no, there's a couple of matches after that. Again, yeah, you know, exactly. Kid, it's like back to back to back. Yeah, yeah so that's it's a not great like match. Absolutely. He ends up pulling off the win. And yeah, it's really people are starting to really get behind Booker T as a single star at this point. That's it for yeah. sure. And so he gets the uh, win via the missile drop kick, which is one of my favorite uh, moves in, in wrestling of all time. I just loved the way Booker T did it. Uh, a lot of wrestlers pulled it off well, like um, Kidman, uh, Booker T. Like, yeah, I'd say Booker T was one of the nicer ones. That was the nicer Owen ones, Hart bro. Did it. 
Sometimes. Owen Hart did it. Excellent. Rest in peace. Uh, but Booker T, hands down, missile dropkick, it's his, man. Yeah. And, uh, the way and it he was did also it... a good move to do in the game. Oh, yeah, for sure. For, yeah, in the game. There it you go. It would make the man. guy, like, take the fall where, like, he falls on the back of his head and then flips over. Exactly. And be, like, <laughs> on his stomach. You absolutely. Know? Absolutely. <laughs> bro. You, you know me. The, the, exactly. You know it. So then, um, <clears throat> yeah, second match, another great like kind of opener match like uh but between two awesome guys psychosis and conan right i i don't know if i would have put this as the first match and put eddie booker as second it doesn't really matter but yeah at this point conan's nwo which is pretty cool and uh the feud is that he's like pissed off that psychosis Over lost his match uh lost yeah. his mask to jericho yeah. He says it's a disrespect to Mexicans. Because the lucha, your mask is your pride, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, losing your mask, bro, is like getting your hair cut in the North American version. Like you have to cut your hair, especially if you're a, a heel and you have long blonde hair and you cut it off, bro. Won't work. So, yeah, he's kind of mad. Um, really good match, to be honest. Like just the lucha. Like Conan was a big guy, but he, he was he was pretty big, no? Like he yeah, was a heavy well, he guy. was bigger than like the cruiserweights. He yeah, was yeah, definitely yeah. like a heavyweight. That's what I'm saying. So, so it was he, like he a bit big. more like a heavyweight versus a cruiserweight dynamic. Conan kind of like bullied him a bit during the match, yeah, you could say. For sure. And Juventud is uh, still now like the juice, uh, one of the best cruiserweights. Oh, yeah. He's ever. kind of forgotten, I would say. Like Now, yes, yes. Because he didn't have a run, I think, right after uh, he didn't go to WWE. And he I did, so but long. it didn't really he work did. out. He did, eh? Man, I missed yeah, a bit of really that Yeah, but it didn't era. work out. They gave him a super uh, racially stereotypical gimmick called the Mexicools. Oh, and the Mexico. obviously that didn't work. Yeah, for sure. The, the, you and would then get what, canceled. They're going to blame it on him. Like, yeah, yeah that's no, no. probably not his fault. But good but, talent for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. People should go back and check out the juice as you take a swig of that good oasis. Oh, you all represent, guys. It's just so good. What's this? It's Simon's Depanor. Wait. That's it. So, um, yeah, another great opener. Like, I was thinking about it at this point. Um, one thing WCW definitely had at this point over WWE was their mid card. The matches were way better. Like, with these two openers and even other matches we're going to see later on, like, uh, these guys could put on a better match athletically than, like, say, the WWF mid carders at the time, like, say, uh, Godfather and Val Venus. Uh, were yeah. super over they're yeah. super popular but like wcw their <clears throat> big carters like like booker t he was destined to go on to be a world champion you know yeah and uh, scott uh, steiner buff bagwell like, these go. guys were mid carters uh missed you know uh, kurt henning was a mid carter yeah. as well uh Bret Hart at some point was mid card. He was going in between mid card to main event mid card. So they didn't really use him well, but still, like you had a. Imagine you had Bret Hart as a mid carder. You, you, yeah, you were exactly. pretty set. You were set, and uh, yeah, it's true because uh, Godfather Val Venus, all these guys, Gangrel, uh, Gangrel yeah, was an like they were like mid- cool characters. Yeah, but lots of merchandise. What the Talent? WCW guys? They brought the more athletic and like. Uh, yeah, and it just gave better matches like Eddie Booker here. Uh, Conan sure. at the time was still like pretty athletic. Hoover was sure. like super athletic. For sure. And yeah. uh, so Hoventude gets the a good win with the classic roll up. Yeah. Good old roll up, which and I tried Conan's to do. And Conan's just heel afterwards. Pretty much. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. People uh, didn't really t- take too kindly him, but Hoventude gets the nice little uh, roll up. So then it cuts to Mean Gene and J.J. Dillon. If I remember, it sold out. Uh, Nash, I think two months before, Nash powerbombed the giant, right? On his neck. And he had yeah, the brace. Yeah, exactly. So it's playing out the um, giant versus giant uh, storyline, which was one of the biggest storylines of the time. All right. It wasn't a technical match, we'll say, but it was a hot feud. And I remember buying the uh, the Toy Biz set. It was a Nash and uh, the Giant with the and neck the giant brace. The Giant had the neck brace, I remember yes, that Yes, and he had the referee and the belt with it and the stand that said WCW and WO. So they were selling. So Toy Biz, like we said last time, uh, all the toys were from that era, bro. 
even though you no, were exactly. in 99 2000 it was still they were focusing on that except one line they made jeff jarrett vampire on the new blood but until then bro they were just making uh you know exactly their toys were so out of date it was like it, based on this era and and this like, era alone. WCW versus NWO Revenge was based on this era too. Ex- exactly you know? as well. Look at the roster. One hundred percent. So they really made, um, they really, you know. So they're talking they're about really trying um, to merchandise the shit out of this era. Basically. And they, they they did a good job because I saw Goldberg that year. I saw Goldberg shirts everywhere, bro. Oh, Everyone yeah. had the the tattoo um, and the Goldberg shirt. Um, NWO. So we have. And W all over, bro. Hollywood. I saw the plush Hollywood and Sting. Uh, I had a kite that had Sting on it. Fudge. I had ordered it. Um, like you were saying, so, they even had like gums at the Defender. Like it bro, was they had gums. to that point. Yeah, it, bro. Like, but it had it had the ninety nine logo. At some point, they had the ninety nine logo. You know the yeah. great WCW. But when you opened them up and you had sticker, you had the Lex Luger uh, Wolfpack. You had Macho Man Wolfpack or Raven. So again, bro, it was weird. They were selling some of that 99 vibe with inside again like stickers that you'd stick uh, they were wrapped around the gum right uh yeah. classic and they were the 98 era bro it was the nwo versus wcw versus uh, wolfpack era yeah. right if i exactly. remember correctly yeah they they were really trying to cash in on this era when i mean for sure it was doing the same thing like and uh with the magazines, the yeah. VHS. Yeah. Like, so they were doing well at that time, right? They were the with the merchandising. Had lot, like had a lot of options to buy shit. Like sure, at the time, sure. I was buying all kinds of wrestling merch. Me of too. course. So, so yeah, man. Next, they make so, yeah. the they make the power bomb legal. I think uh, JJ Dillon, uh, yeah, or I think he's just for this match. Just for this match. And then it jumps to one of the craziest matches, actually. Uh, amazing. Come on, man. Classic WCW Cruiserweight Championship match. Dean Malenko versus Chris Jericho. Yeah. Like, when you talk technical, uh, yeah. you could say these two. two. legends. Again, Absolutely. another match with two legends in it. Um, awesome feud. If anyone doesn't remember, like, this feud, it's so good. Once, uh, remember that battle royal where... Um, Malenko comes out dressed as a uh, Cyclope, uh, Cyclope, I believe. Yes, and, and then, then he, uh, he cleans house, I think. Yeah, because that's the only way he can get a, a shot at Jericho's title. That might actually be after this. But yeah, Jericho it was around and Malenko, this time. they had an awesome feud. Two guys who had come from ECW to WCW. And uh, they also had other experience internationally. So, uh, yeah, man, two awesome wrestlers. That's why, like, another example of how awesome the undercard was, the mid-card in in WCW. Like, WWE, their mid-card guys at the time who who were athletic were, like, Kai and Tai. But, like, Kai and Tai were so not, like, popular. They 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 weren't over with the... Yeah, they but weren't they over cool with the. Moves, they no, did, like, they did, but they weren't known like you know Chris Jericho or the man of the, the of the thousand holds, uh, you know it. Malenko and Rey Mysterio and, and Conan, let's say, and uh, you know Raven and all these guys, right? That yeah. was a cool. So that, that it's sad because this was probably the the era where they were doing so good WCW, and after this, I think a couple of months after this, they just went to shit, which is sad to say, but. Again, well, yeah. we're sticking to this like, pay-per-view. This is coming off of um, Starcade 97, basically. Which was a disaster a bit because of the main event. Like it was a good, it was a good event, right? You had solid the build talent. Up was good, but the main event was Fun. lackluster. And then they got and that, that is super the story lackluster. Of the history of WCW. Oh man, like it started from there. Um like they were no, they were still leading and stuff. They still had good storylines thrown yeah, in after sure. like DDP. But people were stuff, starting but... to get like because bro, bit. you had it's like you had it, it's like having ten billion dollars and uh, investing it in one move, and then you lost <laughs> all your money. You understand? Like it was a total disaster that main event, uh, especially with Bret Hart. Like, dude, Bret Hart was probably the freshest, most uh, massive free agent coming from uh, from WWE, WWE yeah. bro. And they put so much money behind him. And one thing, like, uh, Bret Hart wrestles in this show, and one thing that's totally wrong with Bret Hart's character in this that says everything, like, his T-shirt is, like, his face, and it has the American flag behind it and the Canadian flag. Like, Bret Hart should not be associated with the American flag. 
but they're doing that to sell more shirts, I guess. But like that totally didn't work. They totally yeah, you didn't know, get his character in WCW. I don't know why they did that. Maybe because they were they were doing a lot of shows in the South, and a lot of people from the South possibly, you know, yeah, like they like, knew who Bret Hart was, like, but they're like, they're like, yeah, yeah, exactly. They're like, we they they had to make sure they you know uh, kept them safe. I think so. That that's a good point you make. Um, but yeah, that's that's very odd, bro. Because it's, it's Bret Hart, bro. He's the pinnacle of of Canada. Fudge. That's it, and it's Especially not like at the uh, time. it's not like the Southern fans didn't already know who he was. So WCW still had that tendency to force things uh, on everyone. Um, so amazing match, Chris Jericho versus Dean Malenko. It, literally, whenever you have these two, or uh, you know, like guys like Saturn versus uh, Jericho and Ray versus Malenko, it's always back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you don't know who's gonna win. In this one, uh, Jericho defeats Malenko with the Lion Tamer. Yeah, awesome submission and like the real lion tamer. He never did it that way after in WWE. He like no, this was the real down. one. Yeah, absolutely. He this the was one the one that really like did to each other as a kid. Yeah, was like, dude, that actually hurts. Shout out to my brother. It hurt my neck, bro, and my shoulder. Like he do it real well. Uh, but also Melanco, his uh, the Texas Cloverleaf is not too far from. They they're very similar. Yeah. Another right, awesome uh, submission move. Um, um, Texas Cloverleaf is very painful, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as so, well. <laughs> it's super painful as well. So, so uh, yeah, like the Cruiserweight match. title was still meaningful. The TV title was still meaningful. 100%. So, yeah, like the this these three first matches as a block were awesome. Like almost a perfect way to start the pay-per-view. Right. Then after that is a filler match. It's still two big names, like to us now, big names. Uh, you had Lex Luger versus Scotty Steiner. Yeah, well, I would think, I would say at the time, they probably, this this was probably pushed more than the other matches, you know? This was probably one of the more hyped matches because, like, Luger's there. They always, oh, yeah, big they name, always for pu- sure. Like, pushed Luger. And, sure. yeah, so, but he's taking on Scott Steiner's, like, basically freshly turned heel here. NWO style and um, yeah it's it's kind of a slow match compared it's like it definitely slows down yeah it goes from the, the it goes from the uh, uh, you know the cruiserweight agility and again yes you see realize they start out with cruiserweight-ish type of matches yeah. right w so this was always good because you're primed already by now you're super excited um it was very quick it's a quick match i think it lasted four minutes maybe and it was yeah, two powerhouses there's like interference and stuff that's it so uh but yeah like you get like uh you see it's something different because you get like the the big strong guys out there against each other which yeah. is cool it, it's a it mixes it up yeah it's a, it's a really quick match and then yeah so it's building to rick against scott so rick comes out confronts scott and then rick um Scott Norton comes out and uh, accompanies Scott Steiner to the back. Yeah, he's like, come with us, brother. We're your brother. He's not. You know? So it was getting personal and sad there. Very sad. Uh, I like the way Lex Luger finished the match with the classic Lariat, because that's all he did, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> at some yeah. point, it was close, close lines. So. Um, Looking Lex Luger. Yeah, it, was, it was still good, honestly. This is way better than a main event you'd seen in 2000, for sure. Uh, yeah, like, totally, I uh, mean... Definitely. Uh, yeah, but like it, that being said, it's probably like one of the worst, if not the worst, match on the card. But that's because it's a really strong card, and you can't be that bad of a match when it has that much star power. Because yeah. people probably were still interested in it. Because to be honest, names. to be to be exactly to be honest, uh, I I gave it seven on ten that match because of the star power. Like well, yeah, I was like, exactly. ah, seven on ten. Like, it really wasn't for the technical wrestling that they displayed or anything like that. No, and also just... like we already saw a lot of athleticism in the first. Three yeah, and matches. the first three we already athleticism had. Athleticism the... is good, but you don't yes. need a whole show. No, 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 no. Because it gets they boring. balanced it. Yes, they would balance it. So three were enough. You got your doles, and then a big, you know, the two big guys two known guys like sluger and nwo so um it, it was pretty good honestly three four minutes it, it's fine it's a filler as we say bro no exactly and it was like, really quick it's that lettuce in your burger you need that lettuce bro that yeah crunch. that's it exactly yeah. like you I think got... you just want bacon and extra cheese but no, you can't yo, just you have need, that nah you need the lettuce too bro you need the tomato mm, that's the sizzling it. meat bro i'm hungry i'm got the munchies um so, uh next next match definitely my favorite life. match yeah, that's it. Like the last match was like okay, but like this is another 
maybe the best match on the show, yes. arguably, for the U.S. title, DDP against Raven against Chris Benoit. I was so happy to see all these three guys at this era. And the they're same. all in their, like, best. It's like they're in their best. They're in their prime, all three of them in this match. Yeah, so Raven is Raven. He started making a mark for himself, right? Because we all know him as Scotty Flamingo. None of and that. He was here. cool. He stood he was out. Cool, I found. Bro. And he was a good wrestler. He was a good wrestler. Oh, he was yeah. hardcore, and uh, you know he his was, matches uh, had good psychology. Absolutely, exactly. Yes, and um, you had Chris Benoit. Uh, no. Athletic beast. No yeah. matter like what happened. Yeah, yeah, touchy subject for sure. And then uh, at this time, DDP, who was just skyrocketing in popularity. DDP at this time was becoming a a one of the icons. Like he was becoming a millionaire's club guy. Like this is what you he can was tell. Yeah, you can tell that the fans he wanted was, more merch of his. The fans wanted more. Big DDP, time, big time. Know? DDP also, I played him a lot in the games. He had the awesome videos. Um, he was the badass of WCW. Rants. Like he was kind of like the the rebel, you know. He, he was, was the he rebel was. against the rebels. You know? Exactly, and he was uh he was put over, man. I like that uh, he had the Nirvana ripoff team, and it, just the style, the bang, and um, yeah, definitely he was making his rise there. He had I like think a this swag, was, you know. It was this before or after uh, when he started feuding with Macho? I think this was a bit after, right? Yeah, like this he was, was after. He, that was in '97. '97, so, so and that already was really he when he really name. skyrocketed. At this yeah. point, he was still rising. And what was weird is like they only gave him the world title as a heel. They should have yes. they should have gave him the world title as a face. He won it, it in so 99. Popular. Yeah, he won it in 99 where he was not a baby face. I remember. Uh, he was with he Canyon did. and DD and yeah. uh, Bam Bam Bigelow. Yeah, he was a Jersey Triad, so they were heels, uh, which by the way was a good stable back in the day. I remember them. Um we were actually we were actually gonna do uh I think what was it we were gonna do World Wild ninety nine and they're yeah. on it and then we're like no no let's 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 do a good pay per view and randomly picked uncensored which was amazing the match was amazing uh come on you had Raven amazing wrestler yeah, DDP amazing match. wrestler Chris Benoit amazing wrestler you know no matter um the this sad was stuff. like our the uncensored uncensored match you know yeah. Absolutely. Like, the pay per view is uncensored. And yeah, this one really uh, was cool. DDP gets thrown through the set. Yes. Another thing, which I give this pay per view props. At this time, WCW still gave a shit and still had original sets for every pay per view. Yes. Like customly built for each set. Yeah, this one Beautiful. had like light boxes that were written Amazing. Uncensored. And DDP gets thrown through them. And, and all these sets were in WCW Mayhem, the game. And, and, yeah. and that was like the classic sets, bro. So like these are legendary. And I, some of them are in WWE 2K22, yeah. by the way, which is amazing. Um, I love DDP swinging netbreakers. He did it the best. His Russian leg sweep too, bro. He looked like he put a lot of, uh, a lot of force in them. Um, Benoit was excellent as well. The back and forth thing with him and Raven. He did a cool uh, triple German uh, suplex. Yeah. Benoit looked like he just got owned in the middle Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. His brutal chops on Raven. Uh, and then Benoit uh, whips Raven right. There's so much effing action in this match, yeah, like, to this be is honest. Like all three guys really going all out. All, like I'm saying, like in their prime, really like. Awesome. At this time, and all three of them probably deserve to be even pushed higher. But yes. that being said, there's still the U.S. champ, U.S. titled contention, so it's pretty good. Still know? meant a lot, that belt, honestly. Exactly. Uh, like so, we're saying, uh, that's one thing that really stands out here. The the belts meant a lot at this time in WWE. Like, don't forget, the U.S. belt in WWE was kind of a joke. No offense. It was super a joke. It was. Uh, like, don't forget, Rick Rude held that on, in WCW. Uh, Sting held that. Yeah. Uh, you had legendary guys held, you know, holding that title. So that title was really a premium title. It was title a big title, for sure. for sure. The U.S. title, man. I at mean, one time, uh, before WCW, when Jim Crockett Promotions was originally – um, a, like just a private company, you know. Um, the the U.S. title was their main title, and the the U the world title would be defended in every territory, and it would only come to their right. territory every once in a while. Right, but right. That U.S. title 
has a very long history and a very uh, storied history, you know? And uh, yeah, it, it always like garnered respect, the US title in WCW. Definitely a legendary title. Everyone who held them, you know, who, who held that title for sure. I found and, it was uh, so like American WCW. WCW, well, yeah, yeah. I found it was less of an international company in a way than WWE. Like, yes, they hired more international guys, but all their shows were like down south in the States. You know? Yeah, I mean, come on. WCW is born and bred USA. And that was what, what was nice, though, because WCW was super uh, American, but they brought everyone around the world. So you had the yeah. Luchas and the, and, you know, the Japanese and all the, the other Europeans. Uh, the Europeans, all the other wrestlers. So it was it was fun to see that. Whereas, yes, WWF, totally agree with you, was super international. Like, you know, you felt it. You had Yokozuna back in, you know, 90s. Like, just... Uh, Kamala, yeah, just plenty, plenty, and they would always um, be on would always do marketing, yeah, and, on tour uh, and stuff. Whereas WCW stayed mostly in the states, as exactly. you said, but they still got a lot of talent. So you had like Japanese guys and Mexican guys uh, in Alabama, and uh, you know Baton Rouge. Uh, so it was, it was it was good, honestly. That's the uniqueness of WCW. Good old WCW. It so. wouldn't be the same without like those Southern fans. Like no. I always find the best events are always in places like this, Alabama. Yeah, yeah they were hot, man. The crowd, they were, it's a real wrestling uh, city, bro, for sure. Oh, yeah. So you feel it too. Um, and a place it's like, like Alabama, you know, they don't have any professional sports. No. So it's a bit like Quebec City here now with, they don't have the Nordiques. Quebec City, that's where... Uh, in Quebec, we have the biggest uh, independent wrestling league in the in the province. Right. And right, one right. reason is because they don't have anything else there. Like right. compared to Montreal, we have the Canadians, you have soccer, you have all kinds of concerts, you have all Absolutely. kinds of bars. But not there, honestly. And a lot of the um, they also have a big recruiting in Quebec City. They have a big recruiting um, arena for you know for for hockey. So a lot yeah. of uh, a lot of good players come from there, you know. If you if you realize. Oh yeah, for so, sure. So so hockey, but obviously we don't have a team, uh, fortunately. But yeah, but so down there in, in Alabama, it's like makes football sense. and wrestling, you know. Makes sense for sure. Yeah, Captain and Insano. this was Alabama was originally uh, where this show takes place was originally in the Fuller's territory, which was Continental Wrestling, and later became Pro Wrestling USA, and the Fuller's. Uh, the owner was the brother of Colonel Robert Parker. It was uh, oh, Ron Fuller. Yeah. Ron Fuller, yeah, of course. Um, the Tennessee Stud. They were both known as the Tennessee Stud. Kurt. <laughs> Kurt. <laughs> the guy's sure, like, but... his brother's nickname was so good, he's like, I'm using it too. For sure, hey. <laughs> Kurt was related to them, is right? Kurt Fuller? Uh, yeah, Kurt Fuller, I think. All the no? Fullers, they're all really yeah, 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 because yeah. I remember Kurt Fuller uh, being a, a um, yeah, he'd open up on shows and then WCW. Yeah, like a jobber. Kurt Fuller, yeah, it was, exactly. I was, I was being polite. And uh, <laughs> as a jobber, Kurt also, Fuller. Also, Bunkhouse sure. Buck was also related yeah. to them. Legendary, bro. He was their so cousin. Straight from uh, the press, who is definitely a uh, expert when it comes to all the mid south and the classic. You actually spent uh, all summer last summer watching. And yeah, you had exactly. uh, and right now, broken down. Yeah, I always watch, I'm watching all the different territories that I can in trying to do it year by year. And right now I'm actually watching a year of the Alabama territory. The so Alabama. it's funny that we're watching uh, an episode. Alabama, what a coincidence. Say the wrestling world always, bro. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the triple match, amazing. Yeah, uh, it ends, ends up with winning. DDP hitting the diamond cutter off the second rope through a table on table. the table. And then getting the one, it two, three. A hundred percent hit beautifully, but it's still a cool ending. You know, it still looks believable enough that he would have got hurt enough for it to be a finish. But the table just doesn't completely break, so it kind of like, eh. but yeah, for sure. But it should hurt like technically in, re match. I mean, in reality. It should hurt. You know, when you miss the table breaking, well, for bro, sure. uh, it's going if to it hurt. Wasn't strong so. enough to like I mean, exactly strong enough to not break, but still not like. Raven must have been yeah. sore for sure in his ribs, possibly when that happened. Uh, oh, for but sure. yeah, the, the, it was good because it had that little grunge hardcore in it. 
Like, you know, like WCW wasn't known for hardcore at all at that time. No, no. It was all the star power, but that was a little like hardcore. It was always like corporate, like, don't yeah, go yeah, too far, don't yeah, go yeah. too far. Yeah, yeah, and they started that in 99, 2000, a lot, the hardcore, especially when they hired Hardcore Hack, uh, a.k.a. the Sandman, bro. Jeez, oh, that we'll didn't get to last that long. One day for sure. We will, we definitely will. And I would say the hardcore really started with Raven, with the Raven's rules. Yes. No, no, no. Before that, um, they had, like... Um, I would say semi-hardcore, like, you, you know... Yeah, garbage bins and cover, you know, things like that. It started like the out nasty with that. boys and the public enemy in '95 would have some hardcore matches here right. and there through the tables and power bombs. And through then the tables. in the other days, but in general, there wasn't much going on, and true. they definitely didn't have like a hardcore division, you true. know. True, true, true. So, but yeah, Raven really brought the brought the extreme as he was coming from e- ECW, ECW for you know? sure, bro. And uh, yeah, so next we get like the least athletic match on the show for sure, but it's definitely an attraction, you know, and there are two mega stars, two mega Hall of Famers, the Giant versus Versus Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash. So Nash, like compared to our 2000s reviews, he does a lot more here, but that's also because he's wrestling the Giant. So he has to like make it look like he's getting beat up. He can't just be like, I'm just going to be lazy instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he has to put some effort, Nash, in this. Yeah. He has to come to work and work, not just sit on the table and draw fucking strategies. Yeah, but I think this board. match, probably people paid to actually see this on pay-per-view. You know what I mean? Yeah, this yeah, was because... A, a big enough match where people are like, I got to see that. Yeah, at the time, bro, you had the giant with the, the two biggest guys, okay? The two giants of WCW, obviously. And they had the whole storyline of Nash breaking his neck. Yeah, from uh, sold out, if I remember, I think. It was sold out. And then I think they did it again. He powerbombed them a couple times. Once he powerbombed them with the neck brace on. Yes, he did. The, 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 I remember, which one was with the coffee? Threw coffee in his face. Or yeah. he hit him with the coffee uh, pot. I think it was sold out. I think it was the pay-per-view. And... You know what? It sucks. He did botch. He botched that power bomb, bro. Because if you remember, he bombed, he power bombed him, and then Nash like swung on the rope and dropped down next to Giant, and you can see he's like, "Are you okay, man?" Like he put his arm over him. He's like, "Are you okay, dude? Is everything?" Okay? So he botched it pretty bad. So I think Paul White did injure his necks a bit. No, I think yeah. he dropped him on his neck, man. That did not look fake. At five hundred pounds, you know, dude. And he, he didn't even power like he when he landed, it wasn't like a like a like this. Like he landed like this, bro, on yeah. his neck, and you saw it. That was brutal, man. It's uh, like the reason they said don't try this shit at home. Yeah, know? yeah, no, man. This is exactly why, bro. So that's imagine like you're the little brother trying to pick your, your big brother up, bro. You break his neck. That's <laughs> it. It's pretty uh, serious shit, man. But um, yeah, it wasn't athletic. It was really battle of the brutes, this one. Oh yeah, uh, for sure. But like, I mean, it's you have okay to pounds. have a couple matches like this yeah. here and there. Yeah, yeah. Like this is star power. This is a filler with star power name Kevin Nash, bro, big sexy versus the giant. Yeah. I mean, and I remember like it was a uh, at, at this time, which is funny. This is the first show that we've reviewed that like in our lifetime when this came out, we both would have actually been in elementary school, not high school. So, like, we're, like, pretty much little kids when this was happening. I remember being in elementary school and, like, talking with my friends about this feud. Like, oh, like, they're two so big, man. Like, this is going to be awesome, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. And we were, yeah, because we're in fourth, fifth grade, I think, and, in yeah, 98. And we would so. compare... I will. I would compare these two, and then WWE had Kane and the Undertaker as their yeah, two which big was the guys. two giants too. But um, at I'll be honest, this era I didn't have like my cable. I had basic cable, so I'd only be able to watch WWE. So I was more familiar with that roster. I didn't know WCW because WCW I'd watch when I go to my cousins. He had satellite. He had the Star Choice, bro. So I was yeah, able to to watch choice. it definitely. So I I knew all of them, but. Uh, me and my friends would only talk about Kane and and, and Stone Cold, bro. And the DX, we got suspended many times, uh, giving <laughs> suck it. Oh, yeah, yeah, at some point too. they wrote a paper and they're like, "Do not do this, or you get automatically suspended." Like the suck it was a, because bro, don't forget, 99, uh, 97, 98, you still had the parents. 
um, complaining about, you know, uh, things being inappropriate. It's really in 99, 2000 that it started breaking that. And we were entering because the millennium. Because the parents got fed up. They're like, yeah, they're shit's like, gotten too crazy. Then like, yeah, yeah. because shit kept getting pushed more. Like exactly. Like Eminem coming exactly. out. Exactly. Jackass. MTV um, was, uh, it ruined, uh, as they say, MTV. The, youth, the youth of, of the country, but, uh, yeah, you couldn't. We bro, turn on we... fucking MTV. There's, uh, Fred Durst giving the finger. And then the next clip is like Christina Aguilera just getting naked. And we're just like, Oh my and, God. And then, and then the third <laughs> is uh, Eminem dissing both of them. And yeah. uh, like, bro, it was, it was just classic, but we, in 97, 98, the parents were still, um, very strict with the don't show this to the kids and and all the movements for uh, censorship and things like that and then there so, was, yeah it was like a um there was a cultural divide and then like it really feels like it culminated and this will sound morbid to say but with columbine yeah columbine man changed. after columbine dude which was in 99 People Adults were scared of the youth. Scared of kids. Yes, and yes, then, the like, youth. South Park came out, and like we were part of this generation where like parents didn't have that much control over us anymore. anymore. Yeah, because we it went like, from super scared. censorship to no more control. Like we were in between that because two years before that, um, like you remember they made shit but for beef is and butthead and they took it off. Like exactly. we had yeah, beef they were and butthead censor everything, but then exactly. A fight back there was like a pushback because the kids were so fucking like they were fed like we were anxious uh we were fed up man with the censorship like dude like and and it culminated like you said we re- like wrestling brought out the worst in that because the school had to put signs up saying like the x the two hands with x's and the uh like the stop logo like we can't do that and they banned wrestling shirts any wrestling memorabilia even if you had trading cards, it gets suspended and taken away. That was some bullshit, bro. What is this? So yeah, communism. There was like a lot of hate on in like the world about wrestling. Like people might find that funny today. Like they might think that that's like, like baby la la. Happen, like as they say in Quebec, kids, say, baby la la, man. So what the, the kids like, come today? On. Their their schools aren't like think the principals not like what's going on in pro wrestling. Should we be like? Censoring what uh, Roman Reigns has been saying on Monday Night Raw. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for real. Seriously, like uh, that's I don't know what to say, but yeah, it was weird. It was weird, uh, but I mean, '98 they still censored everything, and yeah, uh, I was definitely like all about it, um, all about wrestling in '98, man. Me too. Um, I mean, if you're a teacher, bro, and you're coming on, like you just had supper, you sit down, you open TV, and you see Austin on the turnbuckles giving people fingers and drinking beer. And they're you'd like, be like that's I'm the, horrified. That's the guy oh. who's influencing those kids. Yeah, I yeah, see with every the day. skull. And then the skull represented death. They're like, this kid's going to kill. Uh, I mean, now I think it's, it's it's worse a bit to be honest, because you have all the like all the music. Like, don't don't get me wrong, I love all music, but you know, you have like Cardi, bro, and. Uh, well, like now kids have generation. access to the internet. Kids yes, kids not only that. Born, like, exactly, like, bro. It's a different yeah, era, yeah. man. And the content you see and the access they have is quite different. Before it was hush hush, like <gasps> Stone Cold, don't give two fingers and don't guzzle beer on national TV. It's not as bad That's as why what it, was it is cool now. to be rebellious. It was yeah, cool man. to like. I, d- I did that once with two uh, cans of soda in, the, in the, the back, like the recreation. It was recess, <laughs> and I had two sodas. I got suspended for about three days because I did the soda with my friend Yishan, and then I, I just I didn't pour it on me. I poured it somewhere, and then I gave the fingers. But as I was turning, the lunch lady was there, the, the guard there. La monitrice. La monitrice. Je me fais snitcher, sale, bro. But so- think of this. Like, back in the day, okay? <laughs> It wasn't like today with the internet, but say you had a friend who whose parents didn't want them to watch wrestling, and say you would lend them a wrestling VHS. Okay, that wrestling VHS, like that would be the only way that they might be able to watch wrestling. Yeah. And if they get caught with it, like that thing might go in the garbage and you're gonna be so fucking pissed. 
that your friend's mom threw out your fucking wrestling tape. Dude, it's yeah. One yeah, of my yeah. friend's moms did do to some of them. Okay, mine. so that's happening, you, bro. That's like, uh, it's the equivalent of, oh, we're confiscating all that crack cocaine from the streets and throwing it out. Like, it was that bad. They were like, that's crack cocaine. We're throwing it out. You don't need that shit in your life. Like, it was that bad, bro. got suspended from high school for doing a prank phone call. He said he didn't even say anything about pro wrestling. He called this girl from the school. His mom found out he got suspended from school for doing it, which he didn't even do it during school or anything. So that didn't even make sense. But even as an adult, I still say that that doesn't make sense. But anyways, (laughs) his parents blamed him doing that on him watching wrestling. So they threw out all his wrestling stuff and he wasn't allowed to watch wrestling anymore. Dude, something very, that sucks. And something similar happened to us. Me and my brother were actually, we saw Robocop and Robocop knees a guy in the face. <laughs> my brother, yeah, Murphy, Alex Murphy. He, my brother need me in the accident by, you know, in the face by accident, but it was Robocop we were reenacting a, a Robocop. So I, I didn't like, I cried, but I didn't snitch on my brother. I kept saying I fell, I fell. But my parents were like, we blame wrestling. So we were banned from watching wrestling, bro. And we couldn't watch wrestling for like a good five months. And then we That's had to, uh, man, and then uh, we got my dad to watch wrestling with us. And then the, like, the ban okay, was okay. lifted. The, the embargo was lifted. was lifted back in business, bro. And so it was really, really a touchy subject wrestling, to be honest, in this era, super much more than it ever was, bro. Well, I mean, when you have kids, I mean, I always thought that it was ridiculous when I was a kid that people's parents wouldn't let them watch wrestling. But now as an adult, I'm thinking about it like, I don't know, like maybe not a young kid maybe shouldn't even be watching wrestling. No, (laughs) yeah, yeah. As a parent, bro, now I understand why. Because also don't forget, bro, at the the mid 90s, early 90s, the child child psychology, um, you know, what they learned. Because don't forget, bro, we're still in the 90s here, right? Like uh, we just had like interest, like everything has changed and everything became better in education, workplace, everything. So don't forget that the child child psychology era began a lot in the 90s. That's where all the studies were and they had all the technology now and all the resources. That's when they started giving kids Ritalin, which I completely think it's stupid bro a kid is no, but a kid. that's when they started really talking about absolutely this because yeah. before in our parents age they would just beat the kid uh, yeah just which is worse by the way now they drug them fuck like it's uh just shit man to be honest yeah and then there was like all this fucking rebellion like kids fucking hated school um eminem would talk about it you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, for wrestling sure. Wrestling was part of this, like, fucking counterculture, man. Big time, big and time. It wasn't for everyone, though. Like, I, well, we got to make that clear, like, for sure. It wasn't for, for sure, everyone. Man. So we'll get back on the track here. Next match. Uh, okay, yeah. So, anyways, that uh, Nash Giant match, it was what it was. And uh, yeah, like, looking back, people will probably be like, that sucked. But you got to remember, back in the day, people weren't as um, discerning about, like, athletic. Like, people loved the cruiserweights. They loved the athleticism, but they loved the Giants, too, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You had to have the Battle of Giants. So, uh, Giant wins by DQ, obviously. NWO came in. You had Brian Adams. uh, They came in. uh, Vincent. Yeah, all the, Um, like... Guys who needed to get a payday who weren't... Yeah, yeah, just came in. They probably got paid well, too. Like, let's not bullshit here. They got paid very well, for sure, for this. Um, So, wins uh, via DQ. Uh, Next match was amazing. Kurt Henning comes out with not only Rick Rude, who is a legend, um, versus Bret Hart. This was an amazing, amazing match, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Both good talent. Come on, you both know who they were. Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect. What um, better match can you ask for for oh like man. a fucking semi main like close to main event? Beautiful kind of thing, you know. Beautiful, and it was back and forth. Uh, both amazing wrestlers. The good technical, like this is good technical. They did not use Brett properly in WCW, but that did not take away from his talent. And same with Kurt Henning. One uh, thing I'll say, I find they used Kurt Henning always well in WCW, though. Like as bad as they used Brett. Henning, he was always booked in this role, like close to the main event, sometimes U.S. title. He'd be feuding with like, 
Ric Flair. There was always intrigue about like, is he joining this faction? Yeah, is yeah. He gonna fuck someone. Emphasize over? exactly. They put a lot, and they gave him a lot of mic time too. Oh I yeah, yeah, he had yeah. a lot of mic time, and he joined NWO Wolfpack at some point. I remember he was really cool then. He had his uh, cowboy boots, his jeans, and the uh, red and black, which was awesome to me. That's also Kurt Henning W WCW for me. He was pretty cool, man. I you know rest in good good talent to be honest. For sure, Very yeah. Good wrestler. Like, good so match these guys well. had already had an amazing match in WWE. Oh, definitely. And people remembered. For sure. Like a SummerSlam. And also, so like, there's that. And then the main event is like Savage Hogan, which was obviously a main event at a WrestleMania 5. Oh, so, yeah. So like, just those two matches on the marquee, that's going to sell pay-per-views because people are going to be like, oh, those are like big rematches, man, you know? Oh, man, like uh, WrestleMania, uh, you know, like material rematches, bro. That's Icons, it. so for sure. So Bret and Hart, Kurt Henning, uh, back and forth. Kurt Henning, classic cocky, has a uh, cocky um, Awesome wrestling out. match. Yeah, awesome. yeah, for sure, dude. 98, this Henry early Steel. 98, uh, like, couldn't top that. Definitely solid match. Obviously, uh, Brett gets the win with the sharpshooter. The the the. So, if you had to choose sharpshooter or Scorpion Deathlock, which one would you choose? It's hard, eh? It's still it's hard. hard. Because they both are very similar. Both wrestlers are very similar. Like you know, they're both iconic. I can't choose from her- Brett and and Sting. Well, I'll say you'll obviously choose Sting there, well, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like uh, by a, like a point two, you know, for sure, because I he's my favorite of all time. But you know, these are two of my favorites, man. That's it. No, for sure. So speaking of Sting, Sting's in our next match here. Sting still is the world champion here, coming off his big uh, title victory. Right. Um, and like his return after being like in the rafters and all that. Now he's like world champion sting which is like a, a pretty cool version of sting here so you see more you He's see like more after the Raptors. sting you know yeah, like, he, he, is, he is this is i think prime 98 sting it's like, like the sting prime. everyone was waiting for him to be when he was in the rafters yeah you know and but it was sad we only had that not for long until no, summer and then he joined the long. wolf pack and then he joined the wolf pack which was, I was the, thinking he was while cool. watching this i was honestly thinking sting joining the wolf pack was a mistake I was they should have that. never. It was part of his mystery. It was part of his dude. He it was Sting. Always just, he was always just been there. They, they could have given him. Hey, hell, man! They could have given him. You know, uh, yeah, time he could have been associated, but he didn't yeah. have to be a full member. That's it. That not ruined him, but I mean, you know, it's Sting, bro. He fought the NWO from from the beginning, and that's what. He, this is that's why he's Sting. Exactly. Exactly. It was like kind of like when Stone Cold stern, turned heel and exactly. joined McMahon. It was like what. And the man he's wrestling, absolutely. Plus, the man he's wrestling tonight uh, on this card is the man that invented that gimmick. Scott Hall, yeah. What a big, uh, what a big coincidence. So So Hall here, he uh, got this title match because he uh, won World War III a couple months earlier. Sure. Which is also an awesome event. That's one of my favorite WCW. I love the concept, man, with the three rings and just the mega battle royale with the three rings. The first one with the Yete. I remember the, Yete. the day after that fucking pay-per-view in 95. So I was like eight years old. I remember being in elementary school and talking to some of the older kids who watched wrestling. And one of them uh, always, I guess he got the pay-per-views. I think his dad had a black box. And he was talking to me about the Yete. And I was the like, yet. trying to understand what he's talking about. Like, what and was the like, joke? He's like, it's like a mummy. And he's called the Yeti. And I'm like, but I thought he was a Yeti. Why would he be a mummy? He's like, I don't know. You got to watch Nitro. You got to watch Nitro. So, yeah. Uh, WCW World War III had its ups and downs. But, uh, yeah, Hall won. So, Hall is accompanied by Dusty Rhodes here who uh, obviously has a, a big role in WCW history. And I thought he was cool with, with Scott Hall, but it kind of didn't make sense him being in the NWO. But they pulled it off with Scott Hall. Like, Scott Hall pulls off pretty much everything. Um, yeah, this is just an awesome match. Uh, it, this was surprising. When I, uh, when I saw the card, I was like, okay, Scott, but it was solid. It was really solid. Uh, both are good great wrestlers, psychology. legends, good psychology. It kind uh, of, it, it looked like um, at the time, 
it looked like Skull, like Scott Hall could have maybe like pulled this off at some point. Having won World War III, they were like, this might have been Scott Hall's biggest push as a singles wrestler in WCW, actually. Uh, yes, this was before really shit hit the fan in his life, yeah. I think. Like really, this is just a really bit before that, so... Um, it's like peak Scott Hall year. Yeah, if people want to go and watch like a good Scott Hall match, you can suggest this is one from WCW. This is one of his best. Yeah, this was part of. Uh, I saw an article uh, ten uh, after his death. Um, they released an article saying top ten matches with him. I think this was number two or number three. Obviously, the SummerSlam and the WrestleMania matches with with Michaels top one and two. Uh, this was number three actually. It's an amazing, solid match. Yeah. And um, like, un, not that remembered, I guess. So people should definitely go back and look look this one up. And I'll just mention this though. This is something that's a bit sad about Sting's title run. And it happened to him multiple times in WCW that his title runs would be like overshadowed. Um, his first, one of his first initial WCW uh, world title runs, I think it was actually his second, if not third. With Ric Flair? Uh, in, ni- in 92, they made him the world champion, but then they brought back the other world title that Flair had left with. Then he came oh, back. Oh, yes. It. yes. So yes. then, like, it was like he was like the secondary champion, but he was the world champion. Yeah, he was the interim, we'll say. He looked exactly. like the interim, remember, because he, he took that title. Ric Flair took that title to WWF. Exactly. And then he came back, like, a year and a half later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember that. I, I saw so an interview. They had built Sting up for this big world title uh, run, and then right then away... Then he lost like, it the next day. The uh, title, Starcade. Like, yeah, it. dude, that was super bullshit. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, but he lost the title the next day of Starcade, and then he won it back eventually, uh, yeah. and then fought Hogan again for it, and then by not like by this pay-per-view, he, he was still champ, and he was just defeating people, but... So that's the thing, yeah, like, even here, his title run... I mean, he's not even main event in this pay-per-view, you know? He's world champion, but he's in the second... He's not in the main event. Dude, WCW's problem is they couldn't fucking keep the belt on someone for a good while. Yeah, Like, they did it with Hogan, dude. Like, Hogan held that mofo for a long-ass time, bro. Since 96, he held it. Yeah. He held it for a long... Bro, he sprayed NWO. Once he did that done deal, he held the title until Sting took it back. Uh, Lex Luger won it in between. Remember? Yeah, he won it on a random nitro. <laughs> like it was just out of nowhere. That was that, that was crazy. By that the way, that was cool, where, uh, actually. Cool uh, um, surprise. I think uh, I remember Malenko... not even knowing that that happened because I wasn't. I didn't watch Nitro for a couple weeks or something, and then I bought the wrestling magazine the month that month after, after and they showed the whole thing, and I'm like, I didn't really? even see that happen. Yeah. Yeah, you followed the mags more than me. Like, you had access to the mags more than me uh, in the era. But I found out by buying WCW Nitro, the game. And there was a video package where he won it. And it, it's you saw it was a Nitro apron. That's yeah. where everyone came in. And that's the one where... Yeah, uh, everyone Malenko, comes in. The yeah, giant to, to, to give him well, props. he beats the Giant, I think. He does. Uh, or... Yes. Uh, no, I think it was Hogan. He beat Hogan. Oh, no, yeah. The... yeah, yeah, yeah. He beat so Hogan. all Team WCW came out and just gave him props. And that was the one where Dale Malenko put out his hand to Luger and he snubbed oh, yeah. him. He, he doesn't, saw that. He doesn't give him. I don't think he saw him. Kid. I don't. I don't know if he like from the video. I don't think he saw him. I don't think he I snubbed think him. He's like, or he was a dick you. like that. Yeah, yeah, he was a dick. Yeah. Well, well, something happened backstage then. If that happens, so. He's like, Fuck Dean uh, Malenko. <laughs> but um, good match. Sting over Scott Hall via Scorpion Death Drop, which is one of my favorite finishes of all time, bro. It, it looks like it hurts and it's dangerous sure. looking, bro. Like yeah. I did it yeah, to my yeah, cousin yeah. once like, and when almost he came broke his back head. With that finisher, it was like, oh, that's dirty. Yeah, it is a dirty, dirty. Uh, it looks like finishing. it would just crack the back of your head open. I almost did to my little cousin. Sorry, Mike. Uh, dude, it was brutal. But yeah, definitely good match. I was surprised when I saw it. It was like I love Sting, Sting, but I didn't think it would be that good, and it definitely was. No, oh, yeah, Mirror. definitely. I think it should have been the main event. But that For being sure. said, we'll get to the main event, which is the next match. Hulk Hogan versus Randy Savage. No titles on the line. Cage Just match. kind of like um, they're pissed off and they're both members of the NWO, so they're going to settle it in the cage. At this point, the NWO is starting to rift apart. So Yeah, because you can only have one Supreme. Yeah. And it's because don't forget, Macho was way bigger than Nash. 
like after it was it was Hogan and Nash, right? Vying for the presidency or whatever you call it, the leadership of the NWO. But you always had Macho Man, bro. And and like to me, when I saw them in the NWO, even though he had the title Hogan, I always put Macho as the other guy that could possibly yeah, he was run the like faction. A th- and then they had Bret Hart at one point. Yeah, Bret Hart, brief. that was so oh, foolish, bro. I bought, I bought, I was shocked when I saw this. I didn't know this until recently, like 2000s, that he was in the NWO. When I bought an action figure from Toy Biz, you had the logo of their stable in the back. So when you bought Luger, you'd see NWO Wolfpack. Yeah. And then I bought Bret Hart and it said NWO. And I was like, what the fuck? That's a mistake. It's, it's a printing mistake. I was like, Bret Hart was never in the NWO. And then when I watched it back, he did join the NWO, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't understand for why. Brief, for a very brief moment, then he got kicked out. He sided with Hogan. And then uh, he that's when he became U.S. champion. Right, right. Okay. So very It didn't confusing. really work. A no. Like, story lines, they WCW really didn't use him properly. It did not work. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, this is a cage match. Uh, Savage cl- ends up climbing the cage twice in this match. He's like, like a freaking monkey, this guy, for an old older wrestler. Yeah, he was yep. still very agile and very sure. active, uh, Hogan, uh, Macho, bro. He was not lazy. Like, yeah, he got big paychecks, but he worked for them. Like, when he yeah. had to have a match, he'd always go all out, bro, and the violence and the choking people with the cable TV wire. And uh, I don't think he did in this one, but this was a cage match. Well, so he was agile. Like two huge names Dude, at the time. The I mega mean, powers colliding in 98 again. Like, these two in the main event is more star power at the time then the rival it's more star power than like hpk versus austin at the time oh yeah bro you saw hogan versus savage on a poster and a cage match it's Come like on, that's bro. the biggest wrestling match you can match have. of all time man uh, they never had the a time. cage match in wwe N- like no. on a show they probably did at house shows exactly but, but not uh not on a pay-per-view not, you know? not on a pay-per-view plus they were both vying literally for the leadership of i think the stable or reigns supreme but that's say. it so like macho is kind of the face but he's kind of heel but everyone always still loved macho even as a heel so yeah after this if i remember macho leaves nwo i think and then he's by himself for a bit and he joins sting and I think DDP, they become like a, not a little stable, but they become, I think. They like back you remember each that? other up. Yeah, yeah, they back each other up. And then later on, NWO Wolfpack comes Wolfpack, along in the yeah. summer. NWO for me is always summer 98, bro. Like classic yeah, summer 1998 for sure. 98, 98 was fondly. amazing, bro. Absolutely. I watched H2O 1998 back in the day. So it was a good summer for real. Yeah, um, that was a very good, good era. movie too. Amazing era. Uh, so, yeah, so it was Hogan, a good match. To Hogan be honest. gets a lot of heat as a heel. He's obviously not super athletic. His main events at the time, like it really drags down the show, like athletic wise, because you've got guys like Hoovy, you got guys like yeah, Booker yeah. and shit, and then like Hogan. But like that being said, Hogan was a huge name, still is a huge name. But like people are like, Hogan, why is he such a big star? Because of his run in the 80s. But his run in WCW as a heel, he was such a good heel. He was like the best heel. Like, dude, he is the he is considered, I think, the greatest heel of all time because his heel turn at Bash at the Beach '96 was the so most shocking. shocking. Yeah, shocking. Like it, till this day, bro. Every time there's a documentary, like they either talk about the Monday Night Wars or they talk about Hogan turning. Yeah, true. Uh, heel, bro, and it just broke everyone's heart. And it's just as shocking as Undertaker losing a streak at WrestleMania. Like f- by far, like you cannot yeah, yeah, compare yeah. At, big events. More. Like at the time, uh, you know? big time, big time, bro. Like uh, you it had brought back a lot of wrestling fans. Are like I want to see this, like Hogan, like this new Hogan. So I didn't like Hogan at that time as a heel. Like I loved Hogan because he was Hogan, but I hated him because he was just not yeah, good, same, not same. good guy anymore, bro. He was like, oh, he turned his back. So what sucks about this though, like there's no, there's not even like a declared winner. No, you know? it's a no contest, technically. It's just like a no well, contest, which a lot of the Nitro main events also ended in no contest, which got kind of shitty. Like, the show would be amazing the whole way. But, but this one this event. one was acceptable. This one is acceptable, bro, because you'd had to break one of the two guys' reputations, right? Like, yeah, this was the night where around. you were going to know who's happen. better. Exactly. Like, who's going to be better, Hogan or uh, Macho? So, technically... Even though, like, the result, the end result wasn't that uh, appealing to us, uh, 
they, you know, they just didn't want to pick a winner between the two mega power. Well, probably ultra neither stars. of them wanted to lose. No. But also, so like Sting comes in from the rafters. Um, fucking Brutus Beefcake is there for no goddamn reason. Leslie was, <laughs> he's a good friend, bro. He's always there. And I forgot he was in WrestleMania 93, bro. WrestleMania 9, fucking oh, ridiculous yeah, as a tag team. Hogan. Yeah, dude. He's always like, they're friends, right? So Brutus, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brutus worked out for him. And in WCW, he's just a follower, like Horace, fuck. Uh, a great B NWO member, bro. That's it. Like, like Vincent what? And, uh, Scott uh, like Scott Norton was cool. He was a big powerhouse. He was and, okay. Uh, yeah. he was, he was cool. <laughs> he was scary. He was okay, but like nothing over the top. Stevie Ray and that's it. You know? So uh, yeah, so then Savage ends up attacking Sting though. Like Sting comes to save Savage, but uh, yeah, so then Savage turns against Sting, kind of. And Savage is like standing alone. It's kind of like chaotic. So now we don't know. He's just attacked Team WSW and he attacked, you know, he just fought Hogan. So future holds in place for, for Macho, I think. Uh, I think he, after this, he's not NWO anymore, if I remember, right? Well, that's the thing. We're going to be reviewing the next couple of weeks. Of WCW after this, uh, we're gonna review the next four nitros. So we'll yeah. get to that next week. For sure. Um, I'm not gonna read into spoilers. I don't remember exactly because there were so many no turns, false turns. And it's a nitro, you know, anything can happen, and there's a lot of things you don't see on YouTube from nitros. Like you have a lot of content from these nitros, but I'm actually excited because this is a 98 nitro. That's it. Plus, it's, it's really going to be like, a like I can't class. wait. I'm actually excited. I think that's what I'm going to watch tonight. And uh, this, is something I'll, I'll, this is something I'll probably remember because it's actually good. It's not like WCW 2000s where at some point I had to watch it twice. Well, because I, I was just like, I don't fucking happen there. Yeah, like, dude, what the fuck? I just want to forget this. So, Prez, out of 10, what did you give this event? I gave it 8.5. I mean, I... It, at one point, I was thinking, like, give it very close to perfect. But yeah. it's just the main event took away a bit for me. As much as there, it had star power, I didn't like the non-finished ending. Yeah, the con- no contest. There was a couple, like, slow slow parts. But, yeah, a very solid 8.5. How right. about you? I gave it a close. I gave it a 9. because I say 8.5? 8. Or 8.5? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. I don't know. Yeah. I gave it, I gave it to be honest, a nine because I was just so refreshed and not watching oh, WCW yeah, 2099, exactly. bro, or even 2001. The yeah, this was one point times better. Ex- oh man, much more. Just the roster alone deserved like an eight. And uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, the main event took one point away because it was just like, look, the three first matches I think were better. And all those, a lot of those guys ended up going on to be main eventers and like. At this point, it feels like they were being really held down. And yeah. that, like, guys yeah. like Hogan were going to be yeah. like, yeah, Booker yeah. T, you're never getting a fucking chance. Like, people you can be on the show, but you're in the first match. People were fed up, I think, of that. And people start realizing that not too long after that, hey, man, well, that's the Hogan thing. Like, your bullshit WWE, run. WWE, if you compare the shows, WCW, the matches, the mid card matches would be better. But WWE, the main eventers would kill it. Yeah, 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 one hundred percent, one hundred percent. But to put it in perspective, bud, uh, like the talent, because this is wrestling. We we look on talent, right? Like we love yeah. the talent. Talent is super important. But if you put Booker T, and then Hogan, who do you think is gonna sell more? No, for Obviously, sure, exactly. That's Hogan. Hogan was um, still such a big name. People have to remember that too. That's a very good point. But I do agree. You said something that made a lot of sense. Sting versus Scott Hall should have been the main event because it was a good match and they're both huge star power. But That's you, it. imagine how Randy and and and, and Tara Bolea must have yeah, felt when they were like. What? I think it would have event. sent a good message to the locker room that like Hogan would be like, look, I'm willing to like step back and not always be in the main event. But he didn't. Exactly. So he we saw Hogan to... for sure. <laughs> That's it. So. That being said, yeah, it was a great event. I had a great time watching it. Me too. And uh, yeah, man, I can't wait to get more onto this era. March 98, man, what a great time it was to be a wrestling fan. And uh, hope the fans uh, at home, they can watch along with us. Absolutely. I think Thunder, um, 
Thunder was based on this era around, right? Thunder came out like a bit after, like a couple of months after the, the game on, on PS1, WCW, WCW Thunder. Thunder. Yeah, yeah I believe, and, I believe and when did so. Thunder debut, actually? Thunder debuted uh, the show itself, what, in, was it summer? Yeah, it was 98. I, was, I think it was more near like summerish or mid-98 because Wolfpack uh, was well, I on think the first episode. It was very soon. No, I think one of the reasons they got Bret Hart was because they were starting Thunder and they needed more more pow, more star power. Yeah, yeah. So it was like probably around this era. And then you saw was. Anvil, uh, Bulldog and Anvil were, were wrestling on Thunders too. I think those oh, yeah, are the only events I saw Thunder. them. They were always on Thunder, but they had good matches, bro. They had good mid-carding matches on Thunder. I will not, like, they had good main events. Obviously, they kept it for Nitro, but you wanted to watch solid bid. It was for sure Thunder. Yeah, there was less talking. It was more matches, which was yeah. cool. Absolutely. Yeah, all right. So this has been a great episode uh, to watch and uh, great fun to record this. We'll be back next week, as always. And thanks for listening to the Turner Podcasting System.